So how is our computer coming along? It's been studying the books, but it's test time. We just had another round of matches, which we can test our system on. So this week, I just wanted to look at what am I trying to get? You know, what, what is a, a good level? How much further do I have to go? So again, coming to this article, have the URL in the description below the video. It basically points out that machine learning can't, I mean, yes, but not better than humans yet. So that sets a certain expectation, you know, that so it's not as if there is a magic solution that somehow, oh, if I just apply machine learning, that it will be able to see beyond what I can comprehend and it will magically be able to predict the future. So, you know, at least it's good to ground our expectations. Also, he points out, at the strongest grades of probability, whatever that means, my model predicts roughly 70% of the games correctly. And I've come across that figure from other sites as well. This upper limit of 70%, that that's as well as we can possibly do. That beyond that, it is just random. That So you, you can't uh, reduce it further. So it's like, you know, if I toss a coin, I can do all kinds of fancy analysis. But in the end, it's 50-50. So the best accuracy that I could get is 50% for a coin toss. In football, it seems to be, or, or soccer if you're from America, it seems to be 70 percent or so i heard you know i mean I, I don't know how to give get that figure myself or at least i didn't little teaser there um as i had mentioned in earlier videos i think i have found getting up to 65 percent has been my upper limit you know if i am very careful about the games i have, if i'm very disciplined about the games i bet on um i've had little periods where i managed to get 65 but i but that has seemed to be a, a barrier that I, ha I haven't been able to get beyond that so that 70 percent figure kind of resonated that's small samples you know but it, it's just that yeah i mean 65 seemed to be as high as i'd gotten using you know soccer stats that kind of you know looking at oh this team has won every home game or whatever and the team they're playing is rubbish so yeah i'm highly confident that they're gonna win but like arsenal yesterday it's not a hundred percent even if you have everything you know if all the data is as good as you could hope for it's a 
it's not 99 percent you know it, it's since you know you can have 10 shots and none of them go in because it, hit, it hits the woodwork uh, the goalie makes incredible saves it's just random so that's the first thing I wanted to sort out in my head you know that what what is the uh, marking scheme like what what would be success what would be job well done um, I'm up to as good as you can be and you know that's an incredibly high um, expectation you know I mean this is this is quite an early version of machine learning for me so it could well be that you can get up to 10 or 20 percent pretty easily but then to progress beyond that gets harder and harder and harder so uh, it, it that it's it takes years and years of minor little tweaks here before you can get up to the, like the 70 percent again like and this guy has been um at it for two years yes but not better than humans so i looked at bbc so every week you have predictions made by BBC football expert Mark Garnson fantastic player uh, had an injury which was a cut his career slightly short because uh, I'm in, I'm in Ireland I'm Irish and he was an Irish international so it was a bit of a blow I think him and Beglin both pretty rapidly disappeared uh, anyway the point is here we have human experts this is another typically a celebrity so how do they do well Arsenal lost so that was wrong Palace won so that was wrong Burnley won that was wrong that was a draw, so that was wrong. That was a draw, so that was wrong. So Swansea won, and Liverpool, Chelsea was a draw. And it was one all, so you got it spot on. And in fact, I'd bet on that as well, that it'd be one all. It was a, it was the score that m most people predicted. Anyway, so, that means that he got two right. How did uh, my computer do? Well, it got three right. It said Burnley would win, Swansea would win, Liverpool Chelsea would be a draw. How did the celebrity do? Uh, Arsenal lost, so that was wrong. That was wrong. That was wrong. That was right, because it was a draw. That was a draw. Yeah, so he got one right. He got um, the Middlesbrough West Brom was a draw. So in this um, sample, the computer did do better than humans. Though, to be fair, last week, uh, both uh, Mark Lawrence and the celebrity beat the computer. So, you know, of course, we have to um, take a bigger sample than just one week of seven games. But it shows the computer is not, you know, um, bad. That is, it, 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 in fact, two weeks ago, 
the computer beat the humans as well. So, um, so far, actually, the computer has been doing better. But, as I'm saying again, that's a, it's a small sample, so it's still in development. We'll see. Also, the computer system is using uh, the halftime result because that's the way that you can get up to 70%. While here the here these guys don't know, you know, they're not given that information and basically knowing what the result is at half time not surprisingly helps you get the final result. So here's the computer system, you know, the implemented in R. And we can see that it has an accuracy of 71%, so 70.9. So that is hitting the, the famous roughly 70% barrier. And I think that tells us that this is the upper limit. And I'll tell you why. This isn't a prediction. Properly. This is a, an example where I've taken all the matches, well, kind of. Um, I've taken the matches from the Premier League and then I've trained my model on those matches. So, you know, this is the model is it has been fit to exactly these games, to the training games. And then I've told the computer to try and predict exactly the games that it has already seen before. So, you know, you know, that's not the way I would normally I would do things. You know, you would you would fit the data to some of the games. And then you would apply the model to games that the computer has never seen before to see how well it would predict, you know. So um, this isn't the way, again, uh, that you would check to see how well your model does. But it does give a gauge of an upper limit. I mean, if the model, when shown data that it has already seen before, can only get 71%, that's as good as, a, uh, that's as high a number as it can possibly get. So this was interesting that way, that, that um, it does give a shed light on there being uh, that upper limit. And we can see here, you know, that it, how well it did, you know, the confusion matrix. That 19 out of nearly 40 games, 19 times when it said it was in a way, ma the, the result was going to be in a way win, it was in a way win. But 18 times when it thought it was going to, it predicted that it was going to be an away win, it wasn't. And we can see that it's, it does the best when it comes to home wins. So 67 times it got that right. Or am I looking at the wrong? Yeah. So if the system says it's going to be a home win, it's nearly always right, because it was only wrong six times. So there are all kinds of metrics here. The relevant, the most important one for me when I was uh, selecting which model to use was the Kappa. 
and that was when I began with my first set of models down at about below point two and if you look that up in Wikipedia you know essentially if it's below point two the model isn't good isn't particularly good you know it it's it's giving you an answer but it's um it's not uh, like what actually happens isn't particularly related to what the predictions are so i wouldn't um treat it too seriously and it was only after using a uh, carrot as you can see loaded up here um, and using multiple optimization techniques i was able to find a, a model and a certain configuration for that model which did far better which got me above the point four and that's when applied to um proper testing you know so this point four nine eight two is as i said when the model is applied to data which it has seen before so this kappa is higher than the model actually is so that just means um that okay we we're not far off you know that if the best models are, are roughly 70 percent this is again this 71 percent is like an upper limit number because again it's when it's the thing is applied to data that it has seen before but even when it's applied to new um data it doesn't do badly i think it's about 60 percent so that's I'm, I'm happy with that you know so we'll see how it does um it's early days of testing since this model has only been developed i suppose yesterday so next i also want to look at um gold's data so you know looking at is it easier to predict whether there's going to be both teams to score um three or more goals three or less goals you know those kind of bets are they i mean am i able to predict those with 80 percent accuracy as opposed to the result which is as we can see here the result is kind of capped at 70 getting above 60 i'm happy with so that's where we are now um so let's see how um it it does for the rest of the season <laughs>